Story Treehouse Vegetable v Villains by Andy Griffiths, illustrated by Terry Denton. Chapter One: The Fifty Two Story Treehouse. Hi, my name is Andy. This is my friend Terry. We live in a tree. Well, when I say tree, I mean treehouse, and when I say treehouse, I don't just mean any old treehouse. I mean a fifty-two story treehouse. It used to be a thirty-nine story treehouse, but we've added another thirteen stories. So what are you waiting for? Come on up. We've added a watermelon smashing room, a chainsaw juggling level. A make-your-own pizza parlor, a rocket-powered carrot launcher, a giant hair dryer that is so strong it practically blasts the hair right off of your head, a rocking horse race track, a haunted house, a wave machine. A real life snakes and ladders game with real ladders and real snakes. A twenty-four hours a day, seven days a week, non-stop Punch and Judy puppet show. A remembering booth to help us remember important stuff we might have forgotten. A ninja snail training academy. Terry's idea, not mine. And the high tech detective agency, which has all the latest high tech t detective technology, like a complete set of magnifying glasses, including one so small that you need another magnifying glass to see it, a hot donut vending machine, and a disguise matic five thousand, which has a disguise for every single occasion, as well as being our home. This treehouse is also where we make books together. I write the words, and Terry draws the pictures. As you can see, we've been doing this for quite a while now. Life in the treehouse isn't always easy, of course, but one thing is for sure: it's never dull. Chapter two: The mystery of the missing Mister Big Nose. If you're like most of our readers, you're probably wondering how old we are. Well, it's funny you should be wondering that because today is actually my birthday. I can't wait to see what sort of amazing surprise Terry has planned for me. He's probably in the kitchen baking a cake for me right now. Hang on, I'm in the kitchen, and there's no cake baking going on. Hmm. He knows how much I love juggling chainsaws. Maybe he's planning on throwing me a surprise party on the chainsaw juggling level. Nope. There are a few chainsaws, a bit of blood, and a couple of sewer fingers. But no Terry, and even worse, no party. Perhaps he's planning a make-your-own pizza party. I climbed up to the make-your-own pizza parlor, acting like I've got no idea that Terry is waiting for me. And guess what? Okay, I think I know what's going on. I bet he's forgotten all about my birthday, and he's in that stupid ninja steel training academy. He's been spending all his time there lately, and trying to turn a bunch of dumb snails into ninjas, which, of course, as everyone knows, is impossible. I climb up to the ninja snail training academy, and sure enough, there he is. Oh, hi, Andy says Terry. I'm just training my ninja snails. Watch this. Attack. Fly. Use super ninja snails. Launch ninja snail death stars. Start a ninja decoy fire. Solve a ninja crossword puzzle. Terry, I say they're not doing anything. Yes, they are, says Terry. They're just doing it really slowly, so slowly you can't even see them doing it. 
This is a complete waste of time, I say, especially when there are more important things you could be doing. What could be more important than training my snails to be ninja, says Terry. Hmm, let me see, I say. What about remembering important dates? Like today, for example? What's so special about today, says Terry. That's what I want you to tell me, I say. Terry thinks for a moment and then says, Is it underpants changing day? That's every day, I say. Is it underpants washing day, says Terry. No, is it wear your underpants on your head day, says Terry. There's no such thing. Yeah, I know, says Cherry. But wouldn't it be fun if there was? No, it wouldn't be fun, I say. It would be disgusting. I think you'd better go to the remembering booth and remember what today is. What about my ninja snail, says Terry. Don't worry about them, I say. I'm pretty sure they'll be here when you get back, probably in the exact same spot. Yes, because I'll tell them to stay, says Terry, turning to the snails. Stay! The snails don't move. Look at that, he says proudly, and you said snails couldn't be trained. We go to the remembering booth. Terry sits down and I lower the cone of remembrance over his head and lock it in position. Okay, I say. It's ready. You can start remembering now. Terry gets a dreamy look over his face. Remember the time we came to the remembering booth to try to remember... What's special, what's so special about today? He says, as images of us climbing to the remembering booth both appear on the screen. How could I ever forget it? I say, especially since it only happened one minute ago. Hang on, I'm remembering something else, says Terry. Remember the time we set the wave machine to the maximum size possible and had that surfing competition and you got wiped out and I won? No, I say, I don't remember that at all. I'm not surprised, says Terry. You hit your head pretty hard on those rocks. Look! I shake my fist at him. I'll hit your head pretty hard in a minute if you don't start remembering what you're supposed to be remembering all right now. Terry continues remembering. Remember the time one of the ghosts from the haunted house got out and haunted our toilet, he says? Don't remind me, I say. I was so scared. I needed to go to the toilet, but I couldn't because the toilet was a go there was a ghost in there. I remember when I put my mouth over the giant hair dryer and my head got really big, says Terry. Are you kidding? I say, that was the funniest day ever, especially when I popped it with a pin. Annie, says Terry, I've just remembered something else. Is it to do with me? Yes. Well, I say, what is it? I seem to remember that I vowed to get revenge on you for popping my head with a pin. Never mind that now, I say. Do you remember anything else about me? Anything at all? Yes, I do, says Terry, and it's quite important, too. At last! Good work, Terry, I say. Well, we're supposed to be writing a book, he says, and it's due any day now. Uh-oh. Terry's absolutely right. We are supposed to be writing a book, and it is due any day now. It's strange Mr. Big Nose hasn't called to remind us, I say. Yeah, says Terry. We're already up to page 54, and he usually calls up around page 30. Maybe we'd better call him, I say, and remind him to call us to remind us when our book is due. Otherwise, we'll never get it done in time. Good idea, says Terry. We go up to the 3D video screen and call Mr. Big Nose. We see his office, but we can't see Mr. Big Nose. What we can see, though, are overturned chairs, broken trophies, books all over the floor, and what looks like vegetable leaves everywhere. Boy, he sure has a messy office, says Terry. That's no ordinary mess, I say. This is what is known in the detective trade as signs of a struggle. What sort of struggle, says Terry? That's exactly what we need to find out, I say. Yay, says Terry. We've got a mystery to solve. A big one. The mystery of the missing Mr. Big Nose. We'd better get to our high-tech detective agency and get high-tech detecting immediately, I say. Should I go and get the ninja snails, says Terry? No, I say, they'll just slow us down. But they're ninjas, says Terry. They're also snails, I say. Come on, we've got no time to lose. Chapter 3. Andy and Terry's High-Tech Detective Agency. I don't know whether or not you have your own high-tech detective agency, but if you do, you'll probably know that it can take a long time to get in because of all the high-tech security. I'm not just talking about boring, old-fashioned, big-toe recognition systems security either. I 
I'm talking about big toe, middle toe, little toe, whole foot, lower leg, upper leg, left buttock, right buttock, lower back, middle back, upper back, chest, arms, neck, and head recognition security. Not to mention hair analysis, blood tests, and renal scans. A dance contest and a really hard Andy and Terry trivia quiz. By the time we finally get in, we're pretty hungry. Let's have a donut, says Terry. Good idea, I say. No detective ever solved a mystery without the help of a hot jam donut. We eat our donuts and think, and think, and think, and think. Well, I say, what do you think? I think I'd like another donut, says Terry. Me too, I say. We've got two more hot jam donuts and continue thinking. And thinking, and thinking, and thinking. Well, I say, what are you thinking about? What says Terry about how to solve the mystery of the missing Mister Big Nose? I say, beats me. Terry shrugs. I haven't got a clue. That's it. I say, you haven't got a clue. I haven't got a clue. We haven't got any clues. We can't solve a mystery without clues. But where do we get clues from? Says Terry. From the scene of the crime, of course. I say, we've got to get to Mr. Big Nose's office. Great idea, says Terry. Let's ride there on our flying pig trucks. We can't, I say. They disappeared about a week ago. Another mystery, says Terry, frowning. The mystery of the missing flying pig trucks. Yes, I say. But we have to solve the mystery of the missing Mr. Big Nose first. We'll take the flying fried egg car to his office. No problem, says Terry. I'll just choose a suitable disguise. All right, I say, but make it fast. We don't want the clue to go cold. Sure, Andy says Terry, heading for the disguise automatic five thousand. I'm climbing into the fried egg car when I see some when someone taps around me on the shoulder. I turn around. It's an old man. Who are you? I say. Don't you recognize your best friend? Chuckles the old man. It's me, Terry, in disguise. Terry, I say, quit mucking around. This is serious. Terry, Terry. He's gone again. In his place is a big, fat, slimy frog potamus. Yuck! I hate those things. Get out of here! I yell. Didn't you read our last book? The tree house is a frog potamus free zone. Relax, says Terry, stepping out of the suit. It's just me again. I step forward to throttle him, but I find my hands clutching a metal pole instead of his neck. I look up. It's a stop sign. Terry, I call. Where are you? Right here, says the stop sign. Terry peels off the costume and laughs. Gotcha. Stop doing that! I say. Stop what? He says. Stop dressing up like a stop sign and playing with the disguise of Magic Five Thousand. It's a high-tech detective tool, not a toy. Sorry, he says. But once you get it, it's hard to stop. Get it? Yes. Then why aren't you laughing? Because it's not funny. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Stop saying yes, it is. I say. It's not funny. Yes, it is. Terry insists. I dressed up like a stop sign, and you told me to stop dressing up like a stop sign. And excuse me, Terry. I say I'm very sorry. I have to do this. What he says? This, I say, giving him a short, sharp tap on the head with a magnifying glass. Thanks, says Terry. I needed that. Don't mention it. I say that's what friends are for. Come on to the frying fried egg car. We jump in and pull the yolk t- down tightly over the top of us. I press extra sizzle on the control panel. And we take off through the concealed flying fried egg car hatch in the top of the detective agency. The day we flew our flying fried egg car to Mr. Big Nose's office, and nobody knew it was us because they all thought it was just a flying fried egg. We flew through Mr. Big Nose's window and pa- parked next to his bookshelf. Terry takes out the two magnifying glasses and starts looking for clues. Hmm, very interesting, he says. I see a magnifying glass. I see a hand holding a magnifying glass. I see an arm attached to a hand that's holding a magnifying glass. Hmm, this is definitely a clue, Andy. A very definite clue. Yes, I say, a very definite clue that you are very definitely an idiot. Well, I don't see you doing any detecting," says Terry, peering at me through the second biggest magnifying glass. "Give me that thing," I say, snatching it off him. I scan the office. There's a book lying on the floor next to Mr. Big Nose's desk. 
I pick it up and examine it closely. What is it, says Terry? It appears to be a book about vegetables. Vegetables, says Terry. Yuck, I hate vegetables. I know, I say, and so do I. But we have to look at it. It might be a clue.